Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining me today in this uh, live webinar on natural treatments for weight loss according to Ayurveda. Uh, first, we're going to cover the causes of weight gain. And this is probably the most important subject that we're going to cover here. And that's because you need to diagnose you know, why you're gaining weight. When I have a patient come to me, a new patient, the first thing I'm thinking is not how overweight they are, or what kind of diet I'm going to put them on or what herbs that I'm going to advise. But uh, why are they gaining weight? The cause, that is the most important point. And you could have two or three causes. So until you know the causes, you really shouldn't start on the weight loss path because you could end up uh, wasting time. You could be going to the gym, counting calories, fasting, all these things, and still not be losing weight because you don't know why you gained it. So we're going to cover that first. Then next, we're going to cover the diet. And there's no quick cure for diets, no crazy diet, no calorie counting. That's history. You know, even Weight Watchers let go of calorie counting so you can stop calorie counting. It's not going to be some crazy diet like no carb diet or paleo diet. Forget those. These are all fad diets. So we're going to talk about a weight loss diet and foods, specifically vegetables, grains, and that will help you to gain weight without being extreme. So, and then third, we're going to talk about herbal remedies, which can address the causes. I mean, if you, you find that liver issues is your cause or thyroid is your cause, then you need the herbs to address these causes. So the herbs are critical to address these causes. So these herbs are not just like, oh, take this to lose weight. No, this different products are to address different causes of weight gain. Okay. So, um, you know, it's very important to understand that there's no quick fix. This whole idea of just going to the gym, just counting calories or, you know, starving yourself, intermediate fasting, doing some extreme diet. The whole world is full of extreme diets, thinking these are quick cures. I've had people that did low carb diet, you know, in other words, they didn't have any fruit, any grains, you know, for months and months and months. And uh, then they start having anxiety and nutritional deficiencies. I've had people that did extreme diets like keto diet, paleo diet, you know, and they lose weight and then they have gallbladder problems, fatty liver problems. And uh, and even later, they start to have kidney issues, just like weight lifters and people eating a lot. High protein diets end up a lot of times with the same problems, you know, kidney, kidney problems, kidney damage, kidney stones gallbladder congestion, fatty liver is a typical uh, issues, and even tumors and cysts from these high protein diet. And so there's no need to do an extreme diet. We're going to give you a nice diet. It's not too difficult to follow. You're not going to be dying. You still can eat every day and lose weight, okay? Because we're going to know what we're doing. That's the whole point when we're doing weight loss or you're consulting somebody like me about weight loss is diagnose the causes, adjust the diet to the individual without being extreme, enough for them to lose weight, enough to keep them going, depending even on their life and what they're doing, and then match the herbs to address these causes so we could have good, fast weight gain in a matter of, uh, you know, 10 pounds a, a month would be, is usually the rate that I see my clients losing weight. 10, even 15 pounds a month, at least seven or eight. We can see these testimonials right here. They're really quite um, incredible. And I like this uh, line at the beginning, the attitude of counting calories, pushing yourself to the gym and following radical diets may work for one person, but be entirely unsuitable for another person. Weight gain can be caused by congestion in the liver, congestion in the colon, emotional eating, poor eating habits, weak digestion, as well as even hormonal imbalance such as menopause or thyroid dysfunctions. Um, I, I look holistically at each individual to identify and address the root causes of weight gain and then address them individually in a holistic treatment, which includes herbal remedies. 12 pounds in a matter of a few months, 52 pounds, um, six days ago already dropped six pounds. That's probably water or fecal matter. A lot of times people are constipated. You give them uh, herbs to clean their colon out, they lose four or five pounds in a couple of days. Some people have water retention and swelling. You give them strong diuretics and five, they lose four or five pounds in just a week of just getting that water out of them. 
And of course, here's a person with suffering with thyroid. I gave her thyroid herbs and suddenly she starts losing weight. This person, 17 pounds while using the herbs and teas. See, they know it's the herbs and teas. Once you follow this diet and take the herbs, you realize the herbs are making all the difference and making it easier. Um, this person, um, you know, had some swelling. Uh, let's keep going here. Six pounds, three weeks is not that great, but probably wasn't even giving her weight loss herbs. Some of these testimonials, I was not even giving them weight loss herbs. I was treating other conditions and they lost weight anyway because I improved their digestion. I improved their elimination. Uh, you know, I improved their eating habits and they lost weight because I think many of these people were not serious, uh, obese people. They just were happy they lost some weight while I treated their other conditions. Uh, this person is uh, talking about the herbs again, 10 pounds since she started the diet and the herbs, 20 pounds, 20 kilos. This man was like uh, obese. Uh, basically, he was in uh, Dubai, Emirates, when I used to go there, and he was very skeptical, and I think he was near 300 pounds, and he says very clearly he was skeptical, but he said those herbs made all the difference. I, uh, I was wrong with herbs, um, and they'll let you know exactly uh, how badly you're treating yourself. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means, but... He did appreciate the herbs. Here, another case, thyroid formula worked very well. Uh, digestive tea helped. Surprise, the weight came down. See, I probably wasn't treating the person for weight. Here, 80 pounds over five or six months. You know, seven pounds, probably wasn't treating it. So, you know, I have a lot of testimonials. They go on. There's more of them. Uh, so it's very effective. And I just want to show you while I have you here, here's my weight loss support group in uh, Facebook. So you can go look for me. Just Google my name, Kabir Southwick, or type weight loss support group by Master Herbalist Kabir. But if you type Kabir Southwick, you'll find me. And um, then you can join my weight loss group where I'll answer questions. And I have a lot of information on here on thyroid video I did, weight loss video, a lot of uh, different uh, weight. These are all videos and webinar recordings. Uh, that I've done over the years, how to manage blood sugar and et cetera. So a lot of great, how to improve your digestive fire, reducing cellulite, a lot of great videos and information there. And I'm also there to help answer your questions. Uh, it's mostly for my patients, but I don't really monitor who's my patient, who's not my patient. So you can go there again. That's a weight loss support group by master herbalist Kabir on uh, Facebook. So first, let's talk about identifying the causes of weight gain. Let's go through these. We'll start with probably the most common one, and that is uh, uh, incorrect uh, eating habits. Eating habits. What's the eating habit? We're not talking about what you're eating. We're talking about how you eat. And the most common mistake I see is people snacking all day on crackers and chips and nuts, and uh, particularly nuts, where we see people um uh you know snacking all day on nuts because they think they have protein or they think that they're they're high in magnesium well you're never going to gain weight snacking all day on nuts crackers chips protein bars it doesn't matter if they're organic you have to have gaps between your meals to lose weight to to, to stimulate uh fat digestion and body fat you're going to have to have a break between your meal if you keep grazing and you keep snacking then you're going to find that you never lose weight. It doesn't matter even if it's a healthy snack. And nut is probably the worst snack because it's heavy, it's fattening, it's a weight gaining uh, uh, substance in the first place. And then you're grazing on it. And most of the time that's emotional eating. You're not even hungry anyway. And if you eat when you're not hungry, for sure you're going to gain weight. So, you know, snacking, eating irregular meals, having five, six meals a day, this is a, a completely wrong most of my people, if you're, let's not uh, assume, let's assume that you're overweight, like 30, 40, 50 pounds, at least overweight, not a person who's uh, everybody thinks has got a fine shape to them. And, but you're not happy with your thighs or something like that. No, that's a different type of weight loss when you're just like, want to, maybe your belly is a little big because you're constipated or your, your abdominal area is a little swollen because of your liver. 
and then you're trying to lose weight. No, that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about somebody who's clearly at least 30 pounds overweight. So definitely heavy, near, you know, obese. That's what we're talking about today. We're not talking about lose a couple pounds to fit in your bikini. We're talking about a major weight loss. Um, so um, in those cases, generally these people will do fine on two meals a day, not five, not and with no snacks in between, except maybe apples and some dried fruit. We're going to talk about uh, the food in a minute. The next major cause, but you shouldn't be snacking on, except maybe apples and not sweet fruit like apples or pears, but you shouldn't be snacking all day on uh, crackers and nuts and chips. You have to feel a little hungry. You have to have gaps between your meals. It doesn't You're not going to die if you're a little hungry, if you're 30 pounds overweight. Second is eating the wrong foods. This is very common. People are so confused about uh, what to eat. I'm not sure how they get so confused. Uh, lack of common sense to sometimes some of these extreme diets, they don't make any sense at all, but people follow them for some reason. I'm not sure. So people, th and I think nutrition is a big problem. People are thinking in terms of nutrition, just like they're eating nuts all the time because they have magnesium and protein. So, but that's supposed to make them healthy. I mean, all fruits and vegetables and grains have some nutrients in it, but usually a person who's overweight doesn't have big nutritional problems. I mean, they could be low in vitamin D or something along these lines, but you know, they're definitely not low in protein and fat and probably carbohydrates, you know, maybe trace minerals, but usually there's not big deficiencies in somebody who's overweight. That's a thin person, a depleted person is going to have more deficiencies. Um, you can still have a deficiency through poor absorption, malabsorption, which is creating a type of nutritional deficiency and creating cravings. But the main point here is you have to eat the right foods. You can't be eating weight gaining foods like you know, meat, you know, meat, meat, hamburger, you know, chicken, whether it's white, even fish, these are all high protein foods that are made for building, building body, building muscle, you know, uh, and, and strengthening up, of course, but it's all building. You want to have foods that are light, not heavy. So no matter what somebody tells you, you're not, it's not going to be a healthy way to lose weight, eating a lot of meat, pasta, heavy foods. We'll get into that. But you have to know the right foods for weight loss. And you have to combine that with the right foods for you. If you can't digest the food, then it doesn't matter. You can't eat it. Uh, and that's the next big problem we have is uh, third cause of weight gain is weak digestion or Ayurveda Manda Agni. And this is where there's no digestive fire. And this is very confusing for people because they think, well, I'm not that hungry. I don't even know why I'm gaining weight. I don't even get hungry till like three o'clock and I'm still gaining weight. Well, that's why you're gaining weight because your digestion is so poor. People don't, of course, understand what is good digestion, good elimination. You know, people are getting up at night urinating three times. And if you ask them if they're sleeping good, they'll say yes. Well, you're not sleeping good if you're getting up three times a night. If you ask people, you know, how are their bowel movements, even though they're skipping a day and not having a bowel movement every day, they'll say fine. It's not normal, but it's not normal. And same for a digestion. People are like, my digestion's fine. I'm not even hungry till three. Well, that's a sign of poor digestion. When you have lack of appetite, then you have poor, weak digestion. I mean, maybe you don't get hungry till 10 because you ate late at night, but you should have a strong appetite. And if you look at my testimonials, uh, a lot of people said they're hungrier eating more and losing weight. Well, that's because their digestion's going, the fire's going, the metabolism's going there, and they're eating the right foods. It's a very, very common thing that I hear all the time. And people say, physically, if you looked at the amount of food I'm eating now, it's more than what I was eating before. And I'm more hungry than I was before because I'm not snacking and I'm waiting to the meals. I'm only having two meals. They're enjoying the food more and physically, they're eating more volume because they're not eating heavy weight gaining foods. They're eating light foods, and you can eat them in larger volume, satiate your appetite, feel good, have energy, digest it properly, not have cravings, and be losing weight and still not be suffering and starving yourself to death. That's what you, that starving yourself is not 
a method of weight loss. Now we can talk about fasting. We will talk about fasting, but it, it should be understood how to fast. Most of this information I hear today about intermediate fasting is wrong. You know, you've got to break fast always in the morning. You can't break your fast at four o'clock. Not eating all day and then eating at four o'clock isn't fasting. <laughs> That's poor, weak digestion. And then you're going to overeat. You're going to eat way into the night and wait into the evening. And that's another reason for uh, a weight gain or cause, we should say, is eating too late at night. And that often comes from the person who has the weak digestion. Why is their digestion weak? Maybe because they're snacking all the time. Maybe because they're eating at night. Maybe because they're constipated. See, So you can see there's combinations of causes taking place here. Um, another, so weak digestion means you have no appetite. You know, you're not that hungry. You don't get hungry till two, three o'clock. So manda on you. So we'll fix that. We make your digestion stronger. So you eat in the morning and there's many home remedies to do that. And we will try to talk about those and many herbs that stimulate your digestion. So you eat in the morning, then you're not hungry at night and eating at night. Of course, we know is a big weight gainer. Better to eat in the morning, go for a walk, do your exercise and not be eating at night at all. And then you can do that when your digestion is working, your elimination is working. Next major cause of weight gain, poor liver function. Okay, so you were a party person, you drank a lot of alcohol, <laughs> smoked cigarettes, did drugs, you know, pharmaceutical drugs until you got off of that habit. And all these are damaging your liver, uh, recreational drugs, pharmaceutical drugs. And of course, uh, you know, alcohol, number one, and even uh, tobacco and pollution and other toxins that you've been accumulating. If you've been eating bad food, junk food, processed foods, all these chemicals, all these preservatives for decades, don't think that you, you didn't pay a price. Uh, you know, you may be overweight from it and you may feel sluggish, weak, thyroid problems, blood pressure problems, cholesterol problems, but you probably also have liver problems. May not, maybe your bilirubin numbers are high. Maybe your cholesterol is high. Maybe the doctor says you have fatty liver. Well, these are all types of liver dysfunction, even gallbladder congestion, congestive liver. And when your liver is not doing good, your metabolism is going to be low and you're not going to be able to burn fat very efficiently. And you're not going to be able to digest fat because you're not producing enough bile. And bile is emulsifying fat that you digest. So you can turn it into fatty acids so you can absorb it in your body. So poor liver function is probably the top reason people are gaining weight. And uh, you can go to the gym all you want. You can starve yourself all you want. You can count the calories all you want. And you still got the same uh, poor liver function. You're not going to lose weight. Even for me, when I put person on herbs and diet, and I'm pretty confident everything is good. And then they call after a month, they do their follow-up. I find out they only lost like three pounds. Uh, then I ask more questions about the liver. Do you have, you know, show me your blood work, show me your lipid panel, you know, look for certain signs like chemical sensitivity, tenderness in the liver area, tenderness in the gallbladder, any liver issue I can identify that will give me the clue that I need to treat the person's liver. So hundreds of times, you know, in a weight loss case, I didn't, they weren't losing that much weight in the first month or two. Then I throw in the liver herbs, bam, they start losing weight right away. And they notice it too, because the diet didn't change. The other herbs didn't change once I start treating that liver. And the only way you can treat a liver is with herbs. There's no medicine that can treat the liver because all medication is damaging your kidneys and your liver slowly. So even they give you a medication for your liver, it's damaging your liver, even though your numbers may look better on paper. Next reason for uh, weight gain, of course, is hypothyroid, or we could just say thyroid dysfunction, because you could have, you know, Hashimoto's high thyroid numbers and then low thyroid numbers. But uh, why do we, what is thyroid? Well, that's a whole nother subject. You should watch my videos on it in my uh, Facebook uh, group, weight loss support group for um, by master herbalist uh, Kabir. I have a video there on thyroid function and I've given webinars on thyroid function and particularly low thyroid function. So you need to address the causes. We have herbal remedies, but many eating habits can make your thyroid function 
worse. For example, cold foods, ice cream at night, ice water, all lower your thyroid function and your digestion. So it's a cause of weight gain alone is just cold foods, cold drinks, cold water. You know, this is lowering your metabolism, making your system more sluggish, making your bile and even your uh, hormones, you know, coagulate more, your circulation gets slower. Everything slows down due to coldness. And so cold water, ice water, ice cream, a disaster. And people think, well, it's a coconut ice cream. It's natural. It doesn't matter. It's cold and harmful to your digestive system, harmful for your endocrine system, harmful for your circulation, and ultimately can be a contributor to weight gain, just cold. And then, of course, there's some other categories, too, uh, about just like poor sleep, poor sleep. You're getting up at night, urinating. You're not sleeping well. This create weight gain. You feel tired in the day. You nap in the day napping as a weight gainer that's what we tell really thin people there's plenty of thin people trying to gain weight and we tell them eat your lunch take a nap that'd gain weight <laughs> but if you're trying to lose weight eat the lunch take a walk so inactivity you don't have to go to the gym to lose weight this is like uh, fraudulent thinking is it's incorrect i mean sure being active is good you know not sitting around all day i mean you could go do a garden you could walk or walk around your neighborhood. You should be active, but you don't need to go to a gym and kick your butt to lose weight. Um, and then, of course, uh, poor nutrition. You know, if you're not eating sufficient foods and a lot of people who are doing uh, extreme diets for one reason or another, like this crazy candida diet where people starve themselves for months, they end up gaining weight. When, and they have a lot of cravings afterwards because they've been doing a radical diet and not following the basic tenets of nutrition that you need some protein, you need some fat, you need some carbohydrates. You can't just like no carb diet, something crazy. <laughs> Believe me, there's a lot of crazy diets. Now, of course, you know, I'm an Ayurvedic doctor and pharmacist. And in Ayurveda, we give people individualized diets. But we're still going to cover today the common foods that are weight gaining foods, according to Ayurveda, and the foods that are weight loss. Now, remember, this is for somebody with 30 pounds extra. If you only got a couple pounds extra here and there, you can probably just improve your digestion, improve your sleep, maybe take a few liver herbs and you'll lose it. You won't have to even take weight loss herbs or follow the diet that I'm covering now. So this diet is for a heavy, slow, sluggish person. We call kapha prakriti or kapha vikriti. Not a thin person with a little extra weight on their thighs. Not a, uh, you know, uh, a thin person with just a little belly fat they're not happy with. No, this is for overweight person this diet. So let's talk about it. First thing you need to do when it comes to diet is forget nutrition. That's what's getting people in. Oh, I'm eating protein all the time. Oh, I'm not having carbs. You know, but they're doing other crazy things that are weight gaining. You have to just throw the nutrition out the window here. Just forget that for now. Now, look at, let's look at the basics. Your Ayurveda, we call, when you have excess weight, it's called kapha. It's kapha. So we know what balances kapha. And the thing that balances kapha is not heavy. And when you're overweight, what are you? You're heavy. So you can't eat heavy foods. This, this is so simple. And it makes sense to people. And you can see I have a track record for over 20 years helping people with losing weight according to Ayurveda, not something I read online. And everybody, again, I've repeat this a few times, gets an individualized diet. Nobody's getting the same diet. Uh, but let's talk about these foods that are weight gaining. Um, heavy foods, number one category, heavy. Write that down. No heavy foods. What's heavy? Meat, hamburger, lamb, chicken, even fish is heavy. All heavy. Pasta is heavy. And wheat is heavy. And everybody goes, oh, gluten's bad, gluten's bad. Well, if you're overweight, yeah, it's, but in Ayurveda, it's probably bad, harmful, and people get a reaction more from the chemicals <laughs> that are put on it, the glyphosate and the other chemicals that are double sprayed on our unorganic wheat. But, you know, wheat is still very healthy, very good for a lot of people, particularly thin people, underweight people, people who want to build muscle, who want to be stronger and you can have organic wheat. So wheat is not bad. And just forget this gluten thing. And you should always be eating organic because if you don't, you're going to create a 
an environment for cancer develop. So you want to just, just assume you're eating organic, assume you're smart enough that you got away from fast food, junk food, that's gone. For, and let's, in the next step, stop eating out, except maybe, you know, a couple times a month for somebody's birthday. You need to be cooking food at home, preparing your own food, and you think need to think in terms of vegetables, fruits, grains, and legumes. And we can use the word protein so you understand. Um, that's all you have to work with, and spices and liquids. Okay, these are the food groups. Don't go. There's no going out to eat. There's no junk food. There's no none of this. It's just the God-given foods that we have: fruits, vegetables, grains, legumes, animal protein. And you can still lose weight having a little animal protein. We'll get to that. For example, ghee. Ghee is not fattening. Ghee is clarified butter. You're not going to lose. You're not going to even increase your cholesterol having ghee. So you don't have to go vegan. Now, if you're really obese and you, and you have respiratory problems, a lot of mucus, fatty liver, high, you know, <laughs> uh, gallbladder problem. OK, maybe no ghee. Maybe we just use some sunflower oil. But, you know, for most people, some ghee will be fine. So you don't need to go dairy free. And if you're not that overweight, and you just want to lose a few pounds, it may be fine for you to still have some cheese. And if you're very hot and warm and you have a strong digestion like me, it may be fine for you to have milk still, raw, whole, organic milk. Not this processed, pasteurized, homogenized. We always tend to blame, you know, the, the milk is bad. No, it's the humans who messed it up and pasteurized and human homogenize it that made the problem. Same with wheat. It's not wheat is not the problem. It's what humans did to it. I digress. We go back. What else is heavy? Bananas are heavy. Who cares about the potassium? It's a heavy fattening fruit. You want to eat light fruits. Just remember this light, light. What's light? Apple is light. Pear is light. Raisins are light. A banana is heavy. And second, we don't want too sweet. We don't want sweet. Sweet is gaining. But if you're thin, sweet is fine. If you're hot, sweet is cooling. So it's not like sweet fruits are bad. Thin people, we give them dates and bananas. But if you're overweight, you should have more bitter tasting foods or sour foods like grapefruit or green apple. And of course, we know these are lower on the glycemic index. And of course, if you have high blood sugar conditions, depending on how high they are, you may not have any fruit at all if you have very high blood sugar. But if it's just a little high, you can have some sour fruit, but not sweet fruit. And if you're just a little overweight, you may be still fine on sweet fruit. So none of this is written in stone. But basically, you don't want heavy foods and you, you don't want too sweet of foods. And the next, if you're particularly if you have fatty liver, high cholesterol and oily skin, you don't want oily foods like avocados, olives, and of course, no chips. <laughs> As is chips and nuts, they're fattening. And so what you heard that meat and animal protein is heavy and cheese and yogurt is congestive. And so you basically eating yogurt is fattening. Now, if you have one spoon on your meal, it's not going to affect you. But people don't have one spoon. They have a whole bowl. And they somehow they think these probiotics are going to help them lose weight. Well, you only needed a half a teaspoon to probably get tens of billions of bacteria in your food. So if you love the little yogurt, you don't have respiratory congestion or mucus, then OK, have a spoon. You don't need to be radical and leave out all the yogurt, but don't have a whole bowl and never, ever, according to ancient Ayurveda, have yogurt at night. <laughs> now, I mean. 20 years ago, I was wondering, what is a sure funny thing about Ayurveda? They get so serious about some things. And one of them is yogurt at night. But, you know, later on, you understand it's heavy, it's sticky, it's congestive, it's kapha building, and you're just going to clog up your whole system and gain weight eating bowls of yogurt. So yogurt's out, meat's out. So now you're thinking, hey, what's left? Where's my protein? Beans, lentils, legumes, you know. I'm just giving some examples here. I mean, that's Eden. They're uh, organic, no salt beans, but obviously better. You make your own, but there's a nice picture. And lentils. You can have lentil soup. There's a nice, you know, brand, low sodium there, organic as well, but give you a nice picture. Lentils. If you want to lose weight, eat lentils, legumes. If you get a lot of gas and bloating from some, do the lentils. Do the mung dal. Fine. You can see a lot of Hispanics 
and they're eating a lot of meat in, in the United States. But if you ask them what they used to eat back in Mexico, beans. Did they gain weight in Mexico? No. Of course, they probably worked harder than they did when they came to America and got some computer job. That's a factor. But, you know, if you ask many people who moved from Mexico, when they were in Mexico, they were eating beans and, and, and cooked vegetables. And, and uh, of course, uh, you know, corn or rice, corn or wheat tortillas. Corn is lighter than wheat, so, but, and it's dry. Now, if your skin's really dry, you gotta be a little careful with corn, but if you're an uh, oily skin, heavy person, then corn, or corn tortilla, but of course it has to be organic. Otherwise all the corn now is GMO. So <laughs> that's the problem, but it doesn't make corn in itself bad. I grow corn and it's a very wonderful and it's actually very nutritious. Even white potato is light and dry and good for weight loss. Well, sweet potato is heavy. Sweet potato is heavy. Uh, uh, look at uh, uh, pumpkin. It's heavy. <laughs> it's out. Heavy foods are out. So what you want? Light vegetables. What are the light vegetables you're asking? Uh, leafy greens. If you can digest them. If you can't digest them, you have to cook the food. Even though they are good for weight loss, leafy greens, lettuce, and of course the bitter ones, arugula, kale, these are the best because they're bitter. Bitter is the best taste for weight loss. It lowers blood sugar, stimulates the liver, helps stimulate digestion of fat, helps stimulate enzymes, and is the most detoxing of all the taste is bitter. Sweet is building, bitter is cleansing. So you want bitter vegetables. And when you take these herbs, you're going to find out these herbs are bitter. <laughs> People are shocked. I go, what do you think it was going to do? Taste like a candy bar? You're trying to lose weight. <laughs> you know, you have to suck it up and take your bitter medicine, as they used to say, for thousands of years. <laughs> so the herbs you will find are bitter. And all liver herbs are very bitter. <laughs> but weight loss herbs are bitter, too, because as we're going to explain, one of the things the weight loss herbs are doing is improving your liver function, increasing your metabolism, lowering your blood sugar, increasing, decreasing your cravings. And, and so bitter is doing all that. So bitter grains, the best you can do. Sour fruit is what you want. Sour and light fruit and light and bitter vegetables. Those are the best. And the other uh, vegetable you can have plenty of is flowers. Yeah, I have flowers. People always tease people. You know, they're going, oh, what's flowers? Uh, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. These are all flowers. Cabbage, the cabbage family, cruciferous family, the, probably the best for weight loss. Now, again, this isn't for everybody. If you get gas and bloating from having cabbage, you, I can still put you on a weight loss plan. You don't have to get the gas and bloating. I could still eliminate all the cabbage family and you could still lose weight. But if we're just talking from simplistic point of view, of the foods that will help you lose weight. It's the light vegetables and stems like celery, lettuce, leafy greens, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, kale, Brussels sprouts, all good. And even white potato, as long as you don't have it with any other uh, uh, protein or starch. You just have vegetables and white potato. You know, that's your dinner. <laughs> potato is like filling you up. It's your starch, your carbohydrates, your protein, and filler upper, all in one. Then you have your vegetables with it. And then you want oils that are light too. Now we're not talking about inflammation. Now, if you have, you want to lower your inflammation, there's better oils. Uh, and if you have a hormonal imbalance, there's other oils. But if we're just talking weight loss, particularly somebody with high cholesterol, fatty liver, or gallbladder stones, then you want sunflower oil. Now, people think, oh, it's a seed oil. Seed oils are bad. Well, there you go again, thinking, oh, good, bad, good, bad. Well, there's not the best oil for inflammation because it's high in omega-6s. And you have to get it fresh. You have to get it cold pressed. You can't have, uh, you know, this uh, oil become rancid on it, on you. It has to be of high quality. That's very important. But it's a very thin, it's a very light oil. And when you buy it, you look at it, it looks like water in the bottle. The last oil you want to lose weight is coconut oil. It's heavy and thick. I know it's got antibacterial qualities. I know it's got other benefits. I didn't say it's bad. We're talking about weight loss for a person who's 30, 40, 50 pounds overweight, at least heavy, slow, and sluggish type of person who's been gaining weight for decades, maybe their whole life, which is typical of a type person. 
We're not talking a person who is skinny their whole life and then, you know, last year to put on a little extra weight. That person just needs to change their habits, change the diet, address some of the causes, and they don't need to do this type of diet that I'm giving you today. This is so you get two meals a day on this diet. You've got a lot of leafy greens, a lot of vegetables. You're eating beans. And there are grains that are good. Again, you don't want to just eliminate all the grains and go carb free because you can't go carb free because vegetables and fruits all have carbohydrates. But you can't even do grain free, really. It's not healthy because what's in grains? A lot of our B vitamins are in grains, et cetera. And they support our nervous system. They keep us calm. They keep us from craving food. And we all kind of crave some grains. But there are healthy grains that you can have. Um, even for breakfast, you can have this gluten-free grain uh, cereal right there. And there's chia seed, hemp seed, and buckwheat. Buckwheat, probably one of the best grains for weight loss. So there you go. You have some grains and you still lose weight on that. Buckwheat is a very dry and very uh, light grain. There's also millet. Millet's very good when you're really obese and you have a lot of water retention and swelling. But again, you don't want to do this if you have really dry skin, dry constipation, because you could just get drier and make your own other health conditions worse. So, and then quinoa. Quinoa is very popular. Uh, also is a fine grain. So you could do quinoa, beans, black beans, or lentil soup with your vegetables. And you could cook these vegetables. If you're having a lot of digestive problems, getting a lot of gas and bloating and susceptible to dry, hard stools and constipation, then don't even have the raw vegetables. Just cook them. Make a stew, particularly in the winter. If you're in a cold climate, it's very cold. You don't have to have salads in the winter time when it's snowing outside. Just cook the vegetables. And a little bit of these wrong vegetables isn't going to hurt you. You, just, you don't have to be radical. But basically, you got your beans, your quinoa, and uh, some vegetables cooked. Or in the summer, if your digestion is good, you can have a big salads with beans in it. Very little dairy. But, and if you have respiratory problems, mucus congestion, probably no dairy except for ghee, which I mentioned earlier. And then for snacks, when you're hungry, you can do what I was doing right here. Just eat an apple. There we go, you know eat an apple. I leave a couple apples on my desk. I get a little hungry. I eat a couple apples a day or pears. Sometimes I'll just have a little fresh uh, figs here, you know, just to kind of keep my blood sugar going, keep me from going. But the last thing you want to do, again, I, I repeat, don't be snacking on nuts, crackers, chips, and cookies, and this type of thing. You've got to get rid of all the sweets, pies, cookies, for, and don't mix fruit with your meal, okay? So I think we covered the diet there. You really need an individualized diet. Those were just general guidelines. No heavy foods, no oily foods, no watery foods like watermelon, particularly if you have water retention. You're eating light foods two times a day. And uh, okay, a lot of beans, no meat. <laughs> Simple. Fruit, apples for snacks. So, um, and then really that should be individualized per person, but that's uh, generally. So now let's talk about what we can do to further help address some of these causes. For example, if you have liver issues and fatty liver, then you're gonna to wanna to take this as well, you know, and that, you know, will decongest your liver, cleanse the blood, improves metabolism. And this is taken before meal. See, it's in caps there. You just take a little bit, just a half a teaspoon. And a kook tea is a very special herb that's very bitter. And, uh, and Buma Malaki is one of the best herbs for uh, your liver. And Puna Narava is for swelling and weight loss. Kalmeg is called the king of bitters. So this is a very bitter formula here. And uh, Bring Raj and Manchista also good for the liver. And ginger makes it hot. So this one is hot and bitter. And this is for a kapha person who's heavy and cold person. So we have different liver functions if you have different you know, metabolisms or constitution. And then now if you have thyroid, we don't give you the weight loss herbs, we just give you the thyroid herbs, because what are we doing to the thyroid? We're actually decongesting it because it's clogged up. Uh, you know, and this also helps with cysts, tumors, lymphatic congestion, and get your thyroid going. And this has worked for um, hundreds of people. And it's got the famous, famous formula, Conchnar Gulu, which is made of 22 herbs, which is known to break up congestion, decrease uh, uh, fat in the body, break down fat, decrease uh, uh, 
tumors, cysts, and thyroid. So very, very powerful formula. When you talk about breaking down fat, breaking down tumors, they're going to be strong formulas. Now, if cholesterol is high, maybe we're going to give you this. See, these are the causes. These are not everybody's going to get these. There you see the Googaloo again, Arjuna's for uh, circulation, thinning out the blood, basically, Buma Malaki for the liver, Kukti, strong bitter, and Moringa, which people do hear about, is used for cholesterol. And Trikatu means three hot spices. That's Pippoli, black pepper, and ginger. So this is also a hot formula. And you couldn't do it. Everybody couldn't do it. I'm Pitta Prakriti, so I, I can't do these hot formulas. I can't even do this hot liver function formula. So, and if metabolism is low, we got this very famous Indian tablets here, Arganovati, and this is uh, about 12 herbs together, and this detoxifies the liver, the gallbladder, and helps with skin conditions as well, including uh, itching and constipation and psoriasis. Very good, very powerful formula, and often we accompany that if needed to increase metabolism. Now, the main herbs, so those are, those are all efforts to uh address these causes to your system and some of those you may need even uh colon herbs if you're constipated so here's a few uh other products that help these are more supplemental we're going to get to the main herbs in a minute this weight control tea big seller helps with cravings and emotional eating but if you look here lemon balm which is a calming herb from the mint family chitweed which is a very famous herb for weight loss, particularly when there's water retention and swelling. Garcinia, which I'm going to show you here, probably the most famous Western herb for weight loss. Geminia sylvester, which is for blood sugar. Uh, Brahmi is just to keep your mind calm. Cinnamon and licorice is just there as a catalyst and stevia for taste. So it's basically calming you down, stabilizing your blood sugar. And so people can drink this after dinner. They can drink it during uh, between meals. And that will be like a tool helping them to lose weight. Some people say, okay, I'm not snacking anymore. I don't feel as urges anymore. I feel good having two meals a day. Uh, I'm eating apples. I don't need it anymore. Other people say, oh my God, send me like three bags of that stuff. I'm doing fine on it. And I'm helping me a lot to stay away from overeating at night. And we even fast on that. A lot of times we'll give that to people and we have them fast one day a week. Remember, if you fast, you should always break the fast in the morning. None of these crazy fa intermediate fasting where you get yourself confused and you start eating at four o'clock in the afternoon. If you wanna fast, then you wake up, don't eat. You go the whole day, don't fat eat. And then you start eating again the next day in the morning. And that's a good way to get your digestion going, get your metabolism going, to skip a whole day of eating until you feel hungry. Sometimes it takes two days for people to feel that hunger. But that's a, if you have no appetite, not eating until three or four o'clock in the afternoon, fast one or two days to get your digestive fire going. Here's a big, uh, a very popular tea that I sell. And I also, I provide it on my other site there, Herb Man Teas, and we call it Lose It. And originally it was just called my weight loss tea and uh, the ingredients here on the back in this case. And we can see there's a root, which is stimulating, green tea stimulating, Garcinia, again, Chiminia sylvester for blood sugar, chickweed again, fenugreek for digestion, cinnamon for and ginger for digestion, and stevia, which helps with blood sugar and makes it taste better. So this one we usually give in the morning, and then this one between meals and at night to stop the eating. This one is just kind of like stimulating you, getting you going, and taking away your appetite. So a lot of times I give this to people, and I said, just have this in the morning instead of your coffee. And they go, what else should I have? I go, that's it. You're not hungry anyway. Just drink the tea and wait until you actually get hungry later in the day for lunch and then have your beans and your quinoa or your cornbread and your vegetables. Now, we do have two main weight loss formulas which are taken after meals. Oh, yeah, Garcinia. Garcinia is very sour fruit and very strong taste, very sour and probably the best food, food fruit and uh, uh, herb basically, because it's a fruit, but dried, that helps with stimulating metabolism and helping with weight loss. But I would not be buying capsules of it by itself. You better to have a formula. Formulas are what's important. You notice I'm not selling just one herb like that. This is for amateurs, you know? These are formulas and different formulas are different. One formula I have, weight loss, it has caffeine in it. 
uh, to get you going in the morning. This one has no caffeine, but if you're a, a nervous, anxious person who's not sleeping at night, I'm not going to give you the one with caffeine. But the main herbs that everybody's raving about on my website that they like are these, these traditional Ayurvedic weight loss formulas that are probably 800 years old. And we can see some of the same herbs. Amlaki, Bibitaki, Haritaki, that's the three ingredients of Trifla. Musta, very famous for weight loss. Devdadu, Arjuna for the circulation. Uh, Garcinia, uh, Chikrat for digestion. There's Gumar, which is uh, also for blood sugar. And, uh, and then we have a few more for digestion. Vidanga is actually fighting worms and elimination. And uh, this is a very powerful formula. And this improves metabolism, stabilizes blood sugar, and uh, improves your liver function. So a lot of herbs in there. And you take this after meals. Very, very effective. And people will do six, seven, eight jars. You know, those testimonials I saw, I lost 25 pounds. I lost 50 pounds. I lost 60 pounds. They were probably all taking that formula. Or if they're hot and they had a lot of acidity, because that's a very hot formula, then we have another one here. And this is weight loss formula for pitta. Has no ginger, no hot spices in it, and but a lot of the other herbs are similar. It's just a different formula that's not so heating. It balances pitta, which means heat, but the rest of the formula is the same. So that's what a person would get. Uh, you know, also you can use different seasonings to help with your digestion. You can give herbs for elimination. But just to summarize, you have the weight loss tea in the morning. Then to your hungry, you have your beans, your quinoa, and your vegetables. In between meals, you can drink your weight control tea. After your beans, you take, after your meal, you take one of the two formulas. And unless you have liver or cholesterol issues, you would take one of those before the meal as well, like for your liver herbs. So that's what these clients are doing that are losing, you know, 8, 10, 12 pounds a, a month for four or five months. They're following the diet, taking the herbs. And they're not having cravings. They're not feeling tired. They're not, they're having more energy. And like I said, sometimes they could be eating quite a lot of quinoa and beans and salads and vegetables. And physically, it's a lot of food. They're having two big meals a day and still losing weight and feeling good and feeling more hungry and having more energy and not having to go to the gym, not having to starve themselves because we identified the causes. And like I said, there could be three or four causes why you're gaining weight. So all three or four of these causes need to be written down. That's what I'm doing when I meet people on Zoom for appointment. The first thing I'm thinking is I'm writing down every cause. Bad eating habits, snacking too much, wrong foods, weak digestion, poor liver function, you know, poor sleep. You know, Usually there's four or five of these causes. So by the time they go out the door, I want to make sure that each of these are addressed. Some I'm doing with the diet and some causes I'm addressing with the herbs because there's no other way to treat it but with the herbs so i hope this gives you hope hope this helps you understand about weight loss and get your head away from these fad diets because nobody can tell you what to eat i can't tell you what to eat because i have to know you and diagnose you first so anybody writing a book on a diet is just selling a book it may have worked fine for them it doesn't mean it's bad but it doesn't it's surely not going to be good for everybody Somebody has, you either have to diagnose yourself and understand your causes, or you have to somebody like me who understands how to identify causes and diagnose the human body and look at every system in the body, including the respiratory system, eliminating system, circulatory system, cardiovascular system, even mental state of the person. More anxiety can create more eating, you know, more snacking. So even the mind can be one of the causes being too uh, anxious. Uh, can make you overeat and snack and have emotional eating. So these causes need to be identified. Each cause needs to be treated either in one way or the other, change of lifestyle, change of diet, or taking herbs. And then, then you will see a big progress without starving yourself, without having to run to the gym, and you'll lose weight naturally. And most important, it will stay off. And all you have to do is stay on the diet. It won't even have to be such a strict diet. Once you've lost the weight and you keep your digestion going, you keep your elimination going, you keep your sleep good, these basic tenets to good health have to be addressed first. Don't think you could have a whole bunch of other health problems and have poor sleep, poor digestion, poor eating habits, and then you're going to take some little pill or re find, follow some crazy diet you, you read online and you're going to lose weight. No, you have to go back to the basics. So... Anyway, I hope that helped you understand. That's uh, 
uh, from my experience of decades of helping people lose weight, everybody's different. Every treatment is different. All the herbs are different and there's no quick cures and you're going to have to have some discipline. You're going to have to cook your own food and you'll need to take the herbs. If you're prepared to do all those things, then maybe just give me a call, call my office. Let's do an appointment, do the assessment form, and then I'll diagnose you for you. You can relax. I will give you, I will tell you all your causes. I will tell you the diet. We'll negotiate out the lunch and the dinner and possibly a little breakfast. I'll introduce each herb. And then if you have any questions about taking the herbs, I will be there and my staff will be there to answer your questions and keep you going on this path. You don't have to keep thinking. You don't have to keep researching. You don't have to keep worrying. Okay. I wish you the best and I hope to hear from some of you. God bless you all. And I wish you the best of health and happiness.